Hey guys, can you hear? Is this mic on? Can all please sit down? Lizzie, can all please sit down? All right, um, thank you all for, I know some people are joining us online, so uh, thank you all for joining us online. People in the room, thank you for joining us on in the room. Um, we are happy to have Nate and Francesca coming from the company Jove this afternoon, I think it's afternoon now, um, to present on the product that we currently subscribe to. Uh, Jove, the Journal of Online Video Education, has videos related to uh, STEM disciplines, as well as nursing, psychology. I'll let the experts take over and talk about uh, what other disciplines it addresses, but um, thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it and look forward to your presentation. All right, everybody, my, my name is Nate Welch. Um, I'm one of the directors at Jove. Uh, I'm responsible for, for a couple products, not our entire list, but I, I, can, I can talk about what we do, um, hopefully answer some questions. My colleague, Francesca, uh, from our customer success group. So this is our subscriber group, which you are a part of. So when you subscribe to Jove, you have access to our curriculum specialists, uh, you know, some advanced uh, support, basically, that will work. I'll tell you a little bit about what that means and how you can take advantage of that afterwards. Uh, but that's at, at no charge. That comes with what you guys do. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But first, I'm not sure where to stand here, so I'm not like in the blue light. But uh, really, we I, thank you guys. You subscribe to everything that we do, and a part of that subscription in uh, includes everything that we will do uh, during your subscription. So anything new that comes out, any new journal articles, uh, any new science education collections, or any new products, so that's... We have two brand new products that you're probably not aware of that we'll, we'll show you today as well and see what you think. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of walk through, for those of you who aren't familiar with our content at all, and what it looks like, how to access it, what are some of the professor features, uh, faculty features, administrative features, et cetera, and, and what are some use cases of how you can use this um, that might necess may not necessarily be um, immediately uh, Clear, I guess. Uh, we have to we have to group our content into collections and series, etc. So when you look at something and you say, "Oh, well, that's introductory X," um, I'm not working with anybody teaching an introductory course. That's fine. That's just how we've grouped that content, so we can take a look at it and see if you think there's anything applicable there. So let's uh, start. So we started as the Journal of Visualized Experiments about 10 or 15 years ago, uh, publishing in advanced biology protocols, new concepts, novel ideas, et cetera, but published in video format. So if you're not familiar with the reproducibility crisis, really what that comes down to is a, a laboratory researcher sees something that just came out of one of their colleagues' labs at another university, and they're like, I need to try this. This will really help advance my research. So they open up the journal article, they read everything, and they try to reproduce it over and over and over again. They fail because they just can't figure it out. It may be that that lab has a specific equipment. Uh, they do something. We have a, an old joke that uh, it's a scientist. It's a little cartoon that we made. And it says, shake vigorously. And the scientist is shaking. Uh, but that's the idea that you know when you read a, an old-fashioned cookbook with no pictures or anything, you just kind of f keep your fingers crossed at the end when the oven dings that it came out right. But when you watch a cooking show, you can see exactly how it's done throughout the entire process, what each stage looks like, and you know, hopefully, that what, it'll, what it'll look like when it comes out of the oven. So that's how Jove was born. Our owner, was, uh, the, the CEO and founder, was working at doing his postdoc at Harvard and was struggling with this. And he's like, I would just love a video. So he's like, hey, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll make one. So he started making his own videos, and that's how Jove was born. From there, we said, well, how can we help how can we take the same concept and help students and not just researchers? And that's where our, uh, so uh, I'll come back to this slide in a second to show you the different journal sections. But this is how our science education platform was born. We wanted to make sure that we had student accessibility to this product as well. We started making new content in these areas. We started with uh, biology. That's what we know best uh, originally. So that's where we started. And we added these additional areas. What that means is 
Uh, these are individual videos that are focused on pre-lab and pre-lecture, getting kids ready. So it, how to use a centrifuge, how to use, uh, you know, how to, how to handle animals, right? What lab safety looks like. So how to use an eyewash station, basic laboratory stuff. Uh, general lab techniques of how to pipette, how to use a Bunsen burner, all the way through how to use specific equipment like light microscopy, how not to break the slides, uh, et cetera. Oh, then we expanded into our clinical skills, pre-nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy with uh, our clinical skills product. So that, what that does is that goes through all these different kinds of physical examinations, how to do a knee exam, how to do a uh, pelvic exam, all the way through some pretty, uh, some pretty uh, graphic stuff that we won't show you during lunch, prostate exams, things like that. Uh, so it's a, it runs the full range. Uh, we'll, we'll limit that since people are eating. Uh, this is an example of a, a organic chemistry video uh, from our science education collection, separation of mixtures via precipitation. So what people can do is they, uh, as they're building classes, can take a look, what are the things that, that students struggle with the most? What do we wanna show them? If it's an online setting and there is no lab, at all, like physical lab at all, this is also an awesome opportunity to show specific things that students in a, in a normal lab setting would do, uh, but in an online setting, they can just they can see other essentially other people doing it. There's full text. You can download the full text as a PDF. There's ten languages of closed captions in all of these videos, and you're able to create. I'll show you later. Create tests and embed these directly into uh, into your LMS as well. Uh, we just released a, the, the latest series within our science education line is the Introductory Biology Lab Manual. So this, what, what this does is it, as we sat back about a year ago looking to see what, what should we do next, right? What's the next series? What's the next product to add? Uh, we wanted to make sure we weren't just creating content for the sake of creating content without a use. So we pulled our staff and we pulled some of our advisors and our faculty, et cetera, and we identified that lab settings are, are often difficult, especially at big universities where there might be three or 400 kids taking a lab course. The max amount of people you can put in a lab setting might be 25 or 30. So now you're having six, 10, 12, 15 sections, graduate students helping teach them. Uh, the administration of that became kind of difficult and has grown difficult. So what we did is we, we put together this lab manual. We wanted to make sure that when we did it, not only did it properly serve and well serve the students taking the lab course, but it was app that we wanted to make sure it was also applicable to people that aren't teaching a lab course because we don't want it to be so pigeonholed into that. So I'll, I'll show you how that works. But there's 32 labs for introductory biology. We're, uh, we're in the final stages of production on the chemistry lab manual. Um, and halfway through the physics lab manual. Then there's three more that we're planning in Q4 and Q1 of next year as well. But those are still being storyboarded and shopped around to make sure that they are the right labs. Uh, we're doing the research. So the way we went about this, we took syllabi from universities around the country at different levels. From top tier to small liberal arts colleges, schools that are doing online, uh, et cetera. We picked 32 that had a good overlap, and we went to the universities that taught these labs and filmed them in their lab. Then from there, we edited it, we did our thing, we animated additional concept videos, we did the narration, we did all that kind of stuff to make this. So these were shot at the UC system and a small college called Lake Erie College uh, to give a, give a wide range. When you, when you click into one of our labs, you can see that there are three videos that are associated with every single lab. So this is the cellular respiration lab. There's an instructor prep video which shows the teaching assistants and the instructors exactly what's in the content, uh, what the learning objectives are for the students, what the desired outcome is, what equipment's necessary, as well as a uh, uh, how to calculate what is, if you have 25 students, this is exactly the equipment you're gonna need for the lab. And then as you watch the video, how to set up each individual lab station, uh, any sort of PPE that's required for it, any kind of safety that's needed, et cetera, is all part of the lab prep. Then you get to the concepts video, that's for the students. This is a, a fully original animated concept video that we created in-house that's typically about four to five minutes long. This is gonna give your students a, a real sense of what the lab is because a big, a big challenge when you're combining a lab and a lecture is making sure that the students actually went to lecture first. So if, yeah, okay, you're, you're, you're teaching 
uh, the uh, uh, professor's teaching cellular respiration on a Monday, and then you're going to lab on Thursday. What happens if you decided to sleep in, the student decided to sleep in on Monday, they skip class, now they show up to lab, they have no idea what's going on. Or in a, you know, in a, in a less mean scenario, right, they went to lecture on Monday, but they still didn't really get it. They're going to be at a, a slightly at a disservice when they get to lab. So the concept video is just a, a five-minute primer on everything that you need to know about cellular respiration to do this lab. So it's not necessarily comprehensive, like something you'd see in our basic or advanced biology sections, but it's going to be a, a just like I said, a quick primer uh, in a, in a nice animation. The student protocol video is exactly what the student's going to do in the lab setting. So this is the this is the cooking channel show. Right. This shows them exactly what happens from the moment they walk in, what they need to wear. Do they need to wear gloves, an eye mask? Do they need to be worried about the chemicals that they're using? What are the risks? Uh, what are the learning objectives? What are the hypotheses, the null hypotheses? Everything they're going to need to do in the lab. So let me stop there for a second because the concepts video is worth mentioning that these can be used at any level. So it is a basic concept, right? So what I'm doing right now, before I, I, I just it's a, it's a, a use case here, I'm working with a university that's building an online master's program in biotechnology. So what they're doing is teaching people that are in the pharma industry specifically. So they could be marketing professionals, they could be uh, basic researchers, but people that don't have PhDs or masters, or maybe they have an MBA and they want to get you know more science, like a, a master of science. So they're taking this class. So it's, it's been a long time since they've seen cellular respiration, right? But they need to know that um, in order to progress through their master's in biotechnology. So they're going to show the professors integrating a lot of this content in so that the students start, everybody like gets that refresher. And then she might show this video or might embed this and she uses Canvas. She might build her course using this. Uh, and then 20 minutes later, that student's watching a journal article on cancer research but at least she knows that they've gone through this content. They have that five minute refresher and like, okay, cool, I got it, move on. So you don't need to teach all three of these. So this is very applicable outside of just a lab setting. All right, so how do we, uh, oh, let me go step, step back once uh, here. I'm gonna unshare this and I'm going to go over to my lab manual here. So this, is the lab manual web application. So what I just showed you was in science education, the science education library, which is where you can embed individual videos into your class. The lab manual is a new product that you guys all have access to. This is a replacement for a traditional print spiral bound lab manual. Uh, where, where your university does so much online, um, anybody that works with biology or chemistry labs, I would love to to ask you some questions afterwards to see if, if something like this is even useful for you, uh, but in how many in-person labs that you're doing versus online labs, et cetera. What this does is it, it has all the same three video content, but what you can do is if it didn't log me out, fingers crossed, cool. Uh, you can reorder and rearrange all your labs. So there's 32 labs. You remove the ones you don't want. You rearrange them so your students have those 12, 13 labs that they need. <clears throat> Excuse me exactly what they need. They're gonna, you're gonna go through the protocols, they're gonna follow, uh, follow everything down. Each individual one is gonna have a quiz that's associated with it that we have written 15 quiz questions for, five basic, five intermediate, and five advanced questions that the students will need to know. And you have this cool quiz builder where you can upload your own images, you can add your own questions, et cetera. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Of course. Sure. So uh, when you say that, are you talking the student or the faculty? I'm saying the faculty. Well, the creation process. Yes. Yes, so the, the, way, the way we do it uh, is that each individual, because it's a classroom setting, it's similar if you've worked with uh, Pearson's Mastering Biology or any of, any of the Mastering Suite stuff, it works very similarly. So you, put in, you submit a, 
a request for a specific classroom environment. So we then set, set you up and there's a unique link for every single section. So then the students would get, you'd post that unique link into your, uh, we call it a rostering link, but you'd post that into your LMS. The students would click that and it would add them immediately to the class. So because you're all subscribers, there's no credit card, there's no fees or anything. They just, the student gets dumped in, but the professor, yes, they would, for this, they would need a, a specific username and password that's tied to the course that they're teaching. Yeah, so Jove create, at, at this point, what Jove does is we, we create that and help get the professor set up or help the, the, the staff member that's working with the faculty, however you'd want. Really what, what it takes is I need a first name, a last name, an email address, and the course title and the section title based on what the student, so it matches up with your LMS and your registration. But yeah, I, I do that work or we do that work for you. We don't right now have a way to do it automatically. Uh, and the, the reason for that, honestly, is that we just don't want students to go in and create one and see the quiz answers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I totally get it. So you just want people to understand how it would go about doing this. So they would have to contact you. Yes. Directly. Correct. Correct. Or, or email you Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I will follow up with, there's a slide with that. I'll follow up with that so you guys have it. And anybody that wants to see me afterwards, by all means, for sure. Uh, and then if you contact, um, obviously, Brian, as well as our you know, liaison with Jove, if there's any specific questions on that. But yeah, you can reach directly out to me um, or to Francesca, as well, uh, who supports all of our subscribers. But yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. So, and specifically for, for those, the, the question that was asked was how does, how does a faculty member or a staff member create a username and password on this so that they can customize? And, and the summary of that is that you, and every, the customization is all tied to a course, so that if you're teaching multiple courses, you're gonna have multiple accounts so that the customization stays with that. However, if you're teaching the same course multiple times over the course of several years or anything like that, you can still keep that same environment and that same login and we just continue to create new sections uh, so that your customization stays the same. You don't have to rewrite your quizzes every semester. You don't have to do that. It all stays there, but you can just have new students log in um, to it. Yes, please. If you want to, yeah, sure. <laughs> so let me know if this is too in the weeds on that question, but I think I see what you're getting at. Um, so what we would probably do for an online course is create one master version, and then we might have several sections that are all copies of that, but they would be tied to different instructor accounts with different course lists. Is that getting crazy out there, or is that a possibility? So no. No, that's not, that's not crazy out there. Uh, that's not how the course, the, the platform is, is designed at, at, as of now. But what we can do is if, if that is the case and it's the same, let's say it's the same, uh, it, it's the same course with the same exact customization but six different faculty are teaching it, that, that you can do. Because essentially that's the same model that we have, that we have at the, uh, I like the big state school university where there's gonna be 12 teaching assistants with one lab coordinator. So that lab coordinator would essentially be you and the teaching assistants would be all your professors. So we could still build them that way. Um, now, however, <clears throat> we'd wanna make sure that there's language and descriptions and that things are listed properly so that people aren't listed as a teaching assistant when they're actually a professor or something like that, of course. <clears throat> But if it does require creating, an, for if, if this is something that you guys are like, this is awesome, we would use this, uh, but we need X, Y, and Z feature, that's a big component of my job is, to, is the, the sales engineering side of things. So to figure out what, what you would need to make that happen and, and then tell you if, if that is or not. So one, one of the things that I am looking for from you guys, if you're willing, this is not a requirement, is anybody that wants to take a look at the biology platform and let us know how it matches up with the labs that you guys are already doing. And if the faculty and students, if there's things that, that need to happen, uh, labs that are missing, et cetera, we have a, a fantastic production department. So if there are things that we need to create, it is within our ability to do that. Sure. Sure. 
Sure. Perfect. That that's great. Yeah, and I would I would love you know I, I would love to come out and do that uh, for the, the 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 faculty that teach in person labs. Uh, and, and like I said, like if they're if they're when you look at this content for your online lab stuff, you know this doesn't take the place of a simulation, of course. But if there are things that you can use here, you can either just use the like an iframe embed link right from our website just for a specific video that you want to use. But if you did want to make use of the entire platform, you can do that as well. So if, if that's useful. The other thing that you can do is through, obviously through iframes, you can embed the, the, the app web application itself into your LMS. They can log in directly. would still have to log in using a username and password to this, but they could stay in your environment. Uh, but So for, for now, like just heading into Q2, they would have to, it would just, it would hit a 403 window uh, when they logged in. So it would say, you don't have access and you use your username and password. They would have to then log in one time and it would save it. We're in the process of building out um, single sign-on and LTI for these products to help you guys integrate them much better. Uh, right now, unfortunately, we, we don't have that, uh, but, but the student, through cookies, they would just need to say, they would need to log in once. Yes. Then they'd have full access to it. So with that, if there's a unique link that they would click, they log in, anytime they went back using that, they would, use the same username and password. Right now we don't have, like I said, we don't have that single sign on yet, but we're committed, we're in the process of building that functionality out. Uh, the, the, this and Job Core, what I'll show you next very quickly, are brand new. Uh, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure we under, really fully understood what you know, administrators, like, like you know, librarians, et cetera, designers would need before we spent the money investing in, in a platform that you guys couldn't use. So that, that's the feedback that we need too. All right, we need it to do X, Y, and Z. You know, it's fine right now to do a pilot, but if you ever wanted us to use this in full in a class, it would need X. Please, please tell me, because that's what we want to do. Yeah, I, I, we would definitely do that, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I can hand you this if you'd like. Thank you. It's just a suggestion as we move into a closer connection here to have you have monthly meetings or coming to campus and seeing um, the course designers and, and everyone and just making this workflow just a lot easier, a lot better, being more hands-on that kind of stuff, I mean, we're looking for that. Um, to just, so all the questions can get answered. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. I, I would, that is a, a huge part of my job, so that would be fantastic to do. Uh, and if, if anybody else from my team, you know, came along with some of the IT folks as well, it would be huge for them. Uh, so, just gonna take a note. All right, I wanna show you Core really quickly as well. So what Core is, Core is our first ever uh, video textbook. So this, this platform is designed, is conceived to act as an alternative to a traditional textbook. So what this would do is it would, if for, this is introductory biology, if a if faculty member were to use this, there would be no cost at all to the student to buy a textbook because it's all already paid for through the university. There's 33 chapters, each chapter. Uh, so if I go into, let's say, DNA structure, you're gonna see uh, a beautifully animated table of contents for the chapter itself. If you click into any one of the videos, you get this um, lovely player where you can watch the next video, the next video, and the next video, and just as you are flipping the changes. What's that? I can, it probably won't, 
play for the online folks, but for the people in the room, if that's, yeah, I absolutely. And I'm not sure if we have audio. I'm muted. And I can produce a protein that is totally normal or completely huh. non-functional, depending on the type. These include silent, missense, nonsense, and frame shift mutations. Silent mutations, as the name implies, have no effect on the amino acid sequence of a protein. For instance, if the codon CCA is changed to CCG, it will still encode for the amino acid proline, and the protein will function to show you on genetic mutations here, but oh, the... Yes, so the transcript is here. Uh, once this, we're still in beta on this product. Once it's done, then we start doing all the multi-language transcripts and the closed captioning and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it, it will be, and then as far as there's also full page text as well, just like you would get from a normal textbook with images and all of that. And we're in the process right now for this. Like I said, we're still in beta. All of the bolded words here, like nonsense mutation, you'd be able to hover over that and get the glossary definition, all that kind of cool stuff. Then that also helps searching because we'll metadata tag all of those words, et cetera. And then ultimately, if you click this scientist in action video demonstrates one such method. This is going to link out directly to a journal article from, uh, so this is a peer reviewed PubMed registered journal article. So the student can see not only what the concept is, but how they would apply this in the real world. So what we did is we went through and we curated these to make sure that they were accessible to everyone so that we're not showing some sort of like crazy advanced research that they're not gonna understand, but at least to kind of ground the concept in reality, which is a, tr which is a trick, right? As you're teaching science, like you're, you're teaching an advanced genetic concept of missense mutations. What does that mean and how, do, how is that used? So this is going to show you from our genetics journal uh, something that happens in yeast. Uh, you're actually seeing it in the real world. So we tie all those concepts in. Then there's, there's quizzing at the end of every single video that we show. There's a three question non-graded self-assessment to make sure that you understood the concept before you move on to the next video. Uh, if you skip it, that's fine. We do actually record that you've done it or not. So if the faculty member did want to see if the students are actually taking the quizzes, they can. Um, and then there's fully graded quizzes as well that are built into this platform. As we build it out, there'll be more faculty resources, full screenshots from all the videos that can be incorporated into PowerPoints and presentations, as well as uh, the, the future. Uh, we're building out another two chapters in plant, uh, plant biology, as well as some other cool uh, like faculty guided faculty stuff. So how to use this, how to, how to teach a primary source use in genetics, that kind of thing. So really, if, if somebody's wanting to incorporate more primary sources into their, into their course, but they're not really sure how, we're going to walk you through that. So that's not out yet. Um, you will have access to this. It's in beta now. Anyone that wants access to it, you have access to it. Um, it's just not part of the Jove website. It's a separate thing. Like I said, we're still in beta. The full release will be in August when we'll have all of the features, all the functionality. But we do have faculty. We have about 1,500 students that have used it so far. And we have a couple professors that are actually have fully adopted the beta product, and that's their required text for their course. So they've moved away from the textbook altogether, moved away from that you know, $200 fee that students or $150 fee that students are doing. Uh, so you're able to include all of this stuff in uh, through the regular app, just like lab manual. And I want to show you just because you asked the video content, the, the textbook is, is 90 second videos. So they're all very short, very to the point, but there might be 15 or 20 of them for a chapter. So you're banging through each of the individual concepts and it's bite sized for that, for that purpose. With the lab manual, we do it a little bit differently. Uh, the video animations are a little bit different. Uh, each of our products, we try to have a little bit of in lab. Animals that can more easily camouflage with their environment evade predators and pass on their genes more often than those that do not. 
So we have to make sure that keep this camouflage coloration is a phenotype defined as the visual expression of a trait. So that's, that's the difference there. Oh, as we develop each of these products, as we develop our next psychology product, the animation will look different because we want to make it appropriate to what we're doing. All right, those are the two new products that, oh, please. Yes. So that, okay, so the question is when, when we were in uh, core in the video textbook, we linked out to this, this video, how did that work? That is all within, that video is hosted locally within this platform. So they're not navigating out to a different website. This isn't calling back to Jove. This is just hyperlinked within the platform itself. So th they would just go right back to chapter 13, it would take them here. So we're, we're building in, like I said, we're, there's still a lot of development work that's happening right now on it, but there, there's gonna be a better nav. So you click that and it's like back to the reading. So it takes you either back to the chapter itself or back to the reading. So then you can go right back to where you were. Uh, if it opens in a new tab, that's fine too. Uh, those, that's, that's a very easy thing for us to do if, if that's better. But you know, the, the idea that there are three semesters, that there is three semesters worth of biology content in here. So if you're teaching eco and evo, or if you're teaching, uh, you know, the tree of life, cellular stuff, whatever you're teaching, there's stuff in here, con stuff, I call it stuff. There's like really good scientific content in here for you. And, and any of these concepts, if you're teaching bio, like a, uh, a biotechnology course, or you want to pull in a little bit of biotechnology, you can do the a two minute CRISPR video, a little bit of text. This is a hot topic everyone talks about, but it's not in every textbook or not covered well in every textbook just because of like the three year revision cycle. We have this in here. And then this will link out to George Church's lab at Harvard, just the, the like rock star lab on that stuff right now. So a student can see, here's the concept. This is why it's important. And then here's how the leading scientist in the world is, is, is using this concept. So it's a nice tie-in together, regardless of even if you're not teaching introductory biology, if you're teaching you know, a, a, a survey class on you know, scientific inquiry or on biotechnology, genetics research, whatever, there's, act, this, there's, there's content here for you. All right, let me hop back to, to this. That's where I wanna, I wanna hit pause for a second. Um, and that's the end of the content side of things. I want to show you some technical stuff on the website, how to log in, how to embed videos, et cetera, just so you're aware of it. But I did want to hit the pause button for a second on content. But Brian, did you have? So the, the, uh, we're, the question is, what is the next textbook that we're coming out with? So the next, I won't answer that question yet. The lab. Uh, product, chemistry is next. For the textbook, uh, we're actually looking in psychology as the next textbook. So we're in the early processes of creating the first chapter, or not the first chapter, but a, a proof of concept chapter that we can shop around to make sure the video, the animation, the style, all that stuff works for introductory psychology. But uh, right now we don't have the plans for chemistry. We wanna see, chemistry is very, tr we, we're, we've learned it's very tricky from an animation standpoint because of the amount of math that's involved in animating the, the equations and, and making that work really well. So we did core and then we're coming out with the lab, the lab chemistry and we're gonna learn from that. And then I believe chem is going to be the next uh, textbook after that, but that won't be until tw probably 2020. Uh, it, it's, it's an incredible, it's, a, it's been about a two year process to make 350 original videos, uh, animate them, write all of the text. We have about 10 different PhDs that are working on the content team, plus our animation team, et cetera. But yeah, we, so, have you have a question. I think my question is going to be answered by this slide, one of them, I have two. Okay. Um, like okay. Sure. So if you're using, the question is what, well, how do the lab reports work? So for, um, for the online folks, how, how, do the, how do the lab reports work? And then the, the quizzes. So I'll take that in two parts. 
Uh, if you're using the web application itself, the jovlabmanual.com, you're not just embedding one or two videos, you're asking them to use the whole lab manual. There is a full lab reports functionality that's built in for the faculty to use. So the students can, uh, I don't believe I have any students, oh no, here we go, I do have students in here. So you'd go into the lab report, you can down, you have your students would upload their lab reports to here, you could view them, download them, add your grades, manipulate them how you wanted, and if there are multiple sections, you could run reports on that, all that kind of stuff. So that would all be in here. That doesn't at this point tie in directly into your LMS. Uh, this exists as its own sort of micro LMS right now. As we build out the LTI, we would work with your university and your tech department and everything to make sure that when you submit a lab report that that grade went right into the, the, the actual grading. Right now, yeah, they're, they're uploading a, a Word doc, a PDF, et cetera, to it. They're not entering the lab report directly into the platform at this point, uh, but we wanted to keep our options open on that to see what would work best on an integration standpoint. So if, if we decided to move forward on this, I'd love to hear like what needs to happen on this side of things uh, for it to work for you guys. The second question on the quizzes, uh, just to answer that before, before we move on, the, the quiz platform in core and in lab exist within these systems. The questions are in here, the grading is all done in here, et cetera. Um, I'll show you really quick. If you just wanted to embed one of our science education videos, how to use a centrifuge, right? You can Im also embed that a link to a quiz as well. So that can all exist right in your LMS. They would need, a, the student at this point needs a unique username and password. So I'll get to that in a second, um, but I'll show you how that works. It's a, it's a a little roundabout at this point, but that's again why we're having these meetings and why we're coming here is to make it as less roundabout, as more straightforward as possible. So. It's awesome, that, that's a beautiful segue to the next slide. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. So the question is, uh, how, how, do, how do individual videos get embedded into a, into a course? Uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong tab. So if you are, if you're, so for just let me step one, one back. If you're on campus, like we are right now, uh, the IP ranges are all loaded into our platform, so the students can go right to jove.com um, and get, get access to any, anything if they're on campus. If they're off campus, there are a few things that you can do. So you can use the library's easy proxy, which will get, which will get you in off campus. You can create a username and password on jove.com. That will also get you access to everything because we use the domain. So any student or any faculty member, any administrator has access to it that way. And then the embedding, if you create a registered account with Jove, so if you create that as a professor, it gets sent to us, we verify that you're a professor, it makes you a verified professor. When you go to uh, embed the video content into your LMS, you copy the iframe link and it gets you access to that direct video. This unique link will change if you're a verified professor. So any student that clicks that link, whether they're logged in or not, will be able to see that content. So it manipulates this, it bypasses the login. If you're not, if you don't go through the process of verifying yourself, the student would hit uh, a 403, they'd hit a, re a rejection window, then they'd have to put their username and password in. If they didn't have a username and password, they'd have to create one. So that, that does create a barrier of entry, right, for students, and we can see usage in those situations where students click, they get rejected, and then they never actually log in. And they're like, all right, whatever, it's fine. You have to make it easy for them, right? So if you verify as a professor, you can embed that directly, it skips that part. This uh, also allows you, when you are um, using a Jove test, there'll be a unique link as well. So you have to be a, red, a verified professor to create a test. So like I said, if you're using the centrifuge, basic centrifuge, and you're teaching a chem class or biology class, the students come in, you want them to know how to use the light microscope. So you send them the light microscopy video. Uh, you can create a quiz 
you can manipulate the quiz questions on it. They watch the video, they immediately get prompted with the link that you post in your, your LMS. Watch this video, take this quiz when you're done. It'll show you the results. You can manipulate the quiz question completely. Uh, it's, it's, this functionality is a little bit more basic than what you'll see in the applications themselves, Jove Core and Jove Lab, because this is really just a pre-lab or pre-lecture video. We wanna test them to make sure that they know it. This is more like corporate learning style uh, you can add your own images, you can manipulate the questions, you can delete questions out of it, and then you can email it out to your students, or you can paste this link here, which will just do a quick Ajax call, it'll pull the quiz up, it'll, it'll tell them exactly what they need to do, and you can then see results of who did what, how they did, et cetera, and you can access that through your Jove dashboard if you're a verified professor. So that's how, uh, how this all works. Any of this stuff, right, any questions that you have, that's why Francesca and her whole team exists, right? Um, it's not why she exists. I don't mean it that way. Uh, that's, that's why her position exists. Uh, but what they do is there's a variety of different levels of support that we have from PhD level curriculum specialists to administrators to customer support. Uh, that will help, and, and as far as all, and also communications as well. So that's a big part of what Francesca does. So telling the students what to do, how to do it, how to communicate that with faculty, etc., will help you soup to nuts on all of that stuff. So the idea that there's almost a little bit over 10,000 videos in our platform. Where do you start? How do you curate that? What do you do? That's what our curriculum specialists, our PhDs do, is they'll work with you, they'll take a look at the syllabus um, and assist you. And it's a big part of your jobs. I completely get that. If you need help on that, that's why we're here. Uh, so from my end, I can help you guys out with the technical aspects of it, trying to work on developments over the next year. What is the functionality that you need to start integrating this content more robustly into your curricula? Francesca's team on how to pick the right content, how to get the right content into the right student's hands and how to tell that story uh, to the students about what it is, why they're using it, or even how to tell the faculty about it too. That's pretty much what I got. Oh, a couple quick things if you're interested. Uh, we like talking about this, it's like a little feather that we just got in our cap. Uh, independently of Jove, a faculty member at a, at a big university, just got published in the Journal of Chemical Edu Education on using Jove in an efficacy study. So this is completely independent from Jove. Uh, students received as much of a 50% increase in their scores using our videos. Um, even the students, and I didn't put this in here because I just like to say it and not actually write it down. Even the students that hated our videos did better on their tests. Um, than if they didn't watch them than the control groups did. So they, even if you don't like it, it, you still benefit from the value of video learning. Uh, because some, some people are just like, all right, you know what, I, like to I prefer to read, right? We're not telling you not to read. We're not telling you, even with the video textbook, we're not only having you watch a video, we're never replacing reading. Oh uh, God, we don't wanna do that. Uh, however, we're saying in, conjun in conjunction with reading, you do better when you watch video. And that's uh, an additional study. This was done in partnership with us, but through a third party. So we did not conduct any of the trials, but this, this, we are somewhat biased in this study. It wasn't completely independent, uh, but we had an outside agency conduct it. The students had a 2X improvement at these universities when they watched our videos in conjunction with the text reading. Uh, and then the, we, had, uh, we have another one that I don't have included in here. Uh, just this past semester at Northeastern, a lab course using our videos. Students uh, saved, she, she as an instructor saved 20 minutes out of every class that she assigned pre-lecture videos from us. So when she got to class, she attributed a 20 minute savings of students just being on the same page. So the initial questions, I didn't understand the reading, I'm not sure what this topic is, et cetera. So she extrapolated, she used three videos, I think, so three sessions, that if she had used that, of course, across the entire class, how much time she would have saved and what she could have done with that time. So it's not like the class would have been shorter, she would have used that time to, to teach more rather than going over stuff that sh students should have already known when they got there. So those are just a little bit of like why, why video is important um, from people that aren't me, that isn't me or Francesca. Uh, and then this is my, for all of you, this is my contact information. 
I am actually, I was just down at South by Southwest this past week um, and I went through every one of my business cards. So I have this, Francesca has hers here. Um, so you can take mine, you can write this down or come up to me afterwards, please. I'll grab your email addresses, et cetera. Uh, but I am, I am unfortunately, unfortunately fresh out of cards from that conference. So um, that's it, please. This is, we have, we have time, not much, but we have a little bit of time for any questions or if we wanna break and just talk individually afterwards, that's fine, uh, but it's been a, a, a huge honor to, and privilege for me to come here, uh, talk to you guys about this. I hope, like you said earlier, I hope we get to do this more and on individual, individual cases or in, in a large group. Please. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. We're we're looking into we're looking into that uh, professional development stuff on like the high school level as well, just faculty development, and to have more explain. Where we're a video company, right? So we we think that explaining things through video is better. Yet we don't have a lot of video tutorials or really any. Um, so that's a big project for us over the summer is to have a video on. So when when you ask somebody like, oh, okay. Can you send me something on how to embed? I'm gonna send you a PDF on how to embed something and we're a video company. So that's one of those pro things that we're evolving as, uh, as, as we get older, but. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So for those online, like the question was about professional development and if we offer that, we don't, but I honestly would, it's not that we don't want to do that. Uh, we, that's a, a big passion of mine is to include more video tutorial on, on everything, but to actually build it into a, a, like a training module for people that they're able to, you know, get essentially get credit for understanding how to do this, that's great. I mean, our, our business model was created around like the 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 University of California, University of Texas style systems um, of in-person learning, big libraries, big universities with thousands of students um, in, in classroom learning. So as we get more into this, we're super excited to work with with you all uh, on on doing that because that that's. That, that's where we want to be in that space. And we, we still can, we can operate in both. And that, that's, our, that's our, our desire. Because especially for you guys, you do both. So you can use what we do in the in-person side of things. And if we can get better from you on the online, it, we, all, we all benefit from that. Anything else? All right, awesome. Well, there's, like, there's some swag in the back. If you guys like light up yo-yos, there's some stylus pens, some sticky pads, things like that. Uh, but please, like I said, if you didn't already write my information down or if you want to come up and talk to me, plus, uh, plus we have business cards here from Francesca. Uh, but I would, I would honestly, like, let, if you don't mind, let's talk because I'm curious about, what, about actually doing a little bit more in depth with you. So. Okay. Perfect. Sure. And then if, if there's, if there's, Claire came last time, yeah. So if, if anybody in here specifically is interested in talking to me more about the lab manual product itself, that would be really, really helpful for me. Um, so if you could either raise your hand or come up to me, or if you can say like, you know what, not me, but my colleague, I would really love to see what, what you guys can do with it. Um, you have, like I said, you have free, not free, you paid for it already. Um, you have access to it. So is that something that can be useful for you? I, I would I'd honestly really love to, it's not a sales pitch, you already have it. So if there's anything that we can do to talk about that, that would be really, really appreciated. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you. Thanks.